Hello guys, this is Rotos. Today I'm going to review Chartermate Mini Leather Skyber. So this is one of the re newest tools um, Chartermate has been producing to um, leather work community. This is a very simple and small mini size, but then very effective, very interesting tool. And this is one of the um, tools that I think I will carry within my leather craft kit, which I will show you in a minute. Um, this is very worthwhile um, trying and um, I recommend it to you guys if you are looking into this high quality premium leather tool section. I highly recommend Chartermate because um, his um, manufacturing process and fit and finish is just a top, top notch. So before I talk too much, I would just like to really get on to this um, um, tool. So you guys have seen this before, if you have seen the unboxing video, if you have guys seen it, I will put also a link in the, um, at the end of the screen, you can click it and the unboxing, which is not so much a meaningful, but then uh, this was very good impression when I first received it. Uh, it was very good that um, it was very well produced in a way, but then yet the price was very, very competitive. Um, this is a typical um, Chardonnay skiving knife that is a signature blade. Um, it's um, one of the very popular knife um, he makes and um, it's sold to worldwide. Uh, see the difference between these two. So uh, a little bit shorter, but then you all already have a plenty of um, length there. Yeah, as you say, comparison, it's about 60% um, narrower. Thickness, it's a bit, um, should I say, very similar, but then this one is thinner. Um, I will not go into the inches, but then I will show you the thickness in a millimeter wise. So this is 2.4 millimeter and this one I should say, this one is 3.1 and it's, um, the width is, this is 14,6. So very um, narrower than, so slightly narrower than um, 15 millimeter I should say, just comparison this is 38 so um, quite narrower like I say to f about 40% of, of a uh, width and just the, the length of the blade this is about has a 40 millimeter of a length so um, it's a very short length but then it gives you more control as well and uh, in your hand palm in your hand it has a lot of um, grip in your spacing and because it's a skyber as well. Originally, you can skype it very well because it has a good length. Uh, what's really great about this tool is that um, his heat treatment, I should say, his heat treatments are one of the one of the world best. Um, this steel is now tends to be a D2 at the moment, and I bought the D2 version. And the D2 on his um, heat treatments are very good. Um, uh, some of the knives that are sold all over, all over the world, detours are very common still, but then not all the detours are heat treated the same. So some heat treatments are good, some heat treatments are bad. And I can't say who makes the bad and uh, good heat treatment because I haven't tested them in, on, on my uh, lab or my um, working condition. But then what I can say is that Chardonnay D2 and also N6, N690, is, uh, what he does is it's a really good high, high quality heat treatment he does which I find it very good. Uh, some tool makers, I'm not sure if they're using the correct steel or um, they're using the correct heat treatment method. Um, heat treatment doesn't show on a, on a leather tool scale. If you see, look at the tool, uh, it doesn't look the same. Uh, the heat treatment doesn't show. So a lot of people don't invest too much on heat treatment. Uh, but then, like I said again, uh, his heat treatments are really, really good. You can see from use. So I just want to show you the performance, how, how they perform um, on a real scale. So I just want to use this um, Japanese leather craft um, cutting mat. It's best for this type of knives. So I'm going to just test cut um, several different leathers. So this is a very thick vegetable leather. How thick this is, I'll measure it again. 3.4 millimeter. So this is very thick. Uh, this is chrome tan leather, two millimeter thick. This is a goat skin, 1.4. This is goat skin double um, glued both sides, 2.3. Yeah, that's it. So let's try to test cut these. And uh, last time, I, when I was doing the other two reviews, some people mentioned that try to cut the long distance because that's where it gets difficult. A uh, short distance, every tool gets it. So actually he's right. Um, when I do the scissor review, I think that was it. Um, 
some people said ah oh, trying to cut long lengths because short cut lengths you know it can do my um, other scissors as well it's a very good point actually so um, one of my good friend also from UK yeah, great person he told me I always use a small pieces so <laughs> that's something I also didn't notice but then yes I'm very I, I save a lot on, on cutting demos <laughs> I don't want to use the whole big pieces but I do have some big really big pieces um, that I, I can use but anyways I talk too much so let's try to cut small pieces in a long cut so I'm left-handed so what's really good about this tool guys as that this tool is doesn't have any right-handed or left-handed use so it's on the both hands it's all good so uh, most Japanese set of tools if you um, seen any um, Japanese set of tool um, they have uh, I'll show you just in a minute Okay, yeah, here. So, so this is my self-made um, Japanese little tool with the O1 steel, but then I'll show you in a way. This is left-handed version and right-handed version, right-hand person cannot use this tool. Um, they have to regrind the steel because of this um, orientation, your blades are protruding this way. So you're cutting your knife, using your knife like this, and then you use it. Then you cut it, you, you cut it like this. So this tool, this tip is is protruding um, to the front, to forward. So if you are right-handed, of course, you, you need to find a knife that this groove is towards to the, on your right-handed. And then of course your bevel has to be on this side. So your flat side will be here. This will be flat. And that edge that you see here will be on this side. This is your right-handed version, and of course, this right, this right now is left-handed version. And the one that you see right now uh, on this mat, this is both-hand version. So you can grab any hands you want; it doesn't matter. So it's both-hand version, and you just need to really find your angle from practice, and then you just need to cut it. So super sharp. You cut it like this. So this is how you use Japanese thread knife and this is not a Japanese thread knife but then it's how it's designed and how to be used. So um, it's super sharp, stay sharp, very very long time and because it's so narrow it's so easy to sharpen as well. Um, I haven't sharpened it for, for many many cuts but it still cuts like it's new. Um, this side very small area you can sharpen it very easily this area is also small, you can sharpen it very easily. This is a really good part of using this tool because you can sharpen it so easily. So I'm really loving this tool. So again, I cut it. Cut so easily. So again, um, as, you, as you can see, have noticed I'm cutting it more difficult uh, to, to cut. So now it's double-sided, double-bonded um, um, gold skin again. like this very easy to cut again see so the most difficult leather so vegetable leather very thick super dry so dry the leather it's easier it's difficult to cut ah didn't make it in one cut now I cut the last and uh, there you go. So I'll try again. Mm -hmm. So um, cutting through a thick leather in a one cut, this is not an easy task. Um, because this blade is quite thick stock, also it's difficult to get into the very thick leather, but then with the sharpness it does the job very good. What you usually do with this type of knife is that you need to scribe leather. So I'll show you the scribing demonstration as well. So you need a glass like this or granite. And I recommend granite or glass. I don't recommend any cutting board or I don't recommend any steel plates or cutting board. It just You just need something very hard um, underneath your edge so that you can uh, scribe on. Um, what you can really do 
if you have a small glass like this, you can add, you can you can um, um, elevate your um, skiving surface a bit higher so that you can um, do your skiving much easier. So a bit like this, you have a spacing, so this thing has a has a thickness, so your hands are much more um, freed before this was on the on the floor. So what you can do is you can sky down your leather very thin. Like this. So, you see? Yeah. Very thin like this. Very thin. So. Just careful. Take your time. Don't try to give it a one go. Just do it several times and make it perfect and that's the goal. Mm -hmm. See. Very thin. So again. It's very tough. This one is very tough. It's a very short piece and oh it's getting difficult to cut through this leather. Okay. Okay now I get it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. The unfinished part you can do it separately like this. You can do it like this. The part did not um, come out quite clean, but then this is due to very short length of this um, knife, but then it does the job done. It gets the job done when it comes to very small, narrow skiving. So. Uh, you don't you can't really do the flat skiving straight very straight with this knife with it takes a lot of skills but then of course using it to this very tiny corner it is very effective because of the short lengths it's difficult to create one flat line um, in, uh, like the biggest the wider length of a of a, a blade so this is there can be downside so um, I try to demonstrate again I have to practice more with this narrow blade um, it's not a super straight line, I should say, but this is because it's intended for small watch straps or something that's very small section. So, um, in a very small section knife, then you can you can do it a lot good, a lot better. So, it's like this is again 3.4 millimeter, very thick vegetable tan leather, and you can sky it easy uh, with this this knife. You can just sky it like so. It gets the job done super easy. It's very super sharp knife and it's, it's safe sharp for a very, very long time so uh, doing it narrow section it's 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 really nice um, cutting it also it's very nice but then like I said the only downside is to like it if it's longer length of the skiving it gets a bit tricky you gotta practice a bit to get it perfectly flat line um, it wasn't that bad I mean yeah, but then it's it's not as good as the um, wider blade um, skiving section. This could be the downside. So I just want to show you so that uh, you guys know aware that this cannot replace all the knives that you have. So um, if you are trying to get into this really good 
steel that can be cut and also can be also used as a sky bar. As a small narrow section sky bar, it can also um, be interesting to this knife. And um, this will be my um, leather track crafted toolkit section. So, so I wanted to show you this type of um, leather craft toolkit what I was talking about to you guys earlier was that I'll just press it here just in case right yeah okay I'll put it down so you guys have seen my red travel kit way 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 while ago and uh, this is the leather craft kit box that I'm I'm putting together so this kit inside this kit I have a lot of stuff inside which I will really show you one day one by one I have to say though guys this getting this toolkit is, is really packed um, I'm trying to really minimize the tool so that um, this thing doesn't get too much big boxes this is such a small box that I really like to carry in a small bag but then look this thing is a a pack of full stuff you know I just need to add this knife somewhere around here with a cap of course just the protective cover I made it very quickly um, last night so yeah so like this uh, it doesn't shut nicely as much as I would like mm. and also I need to put add a straw but then the straw that I made a while ago just barely fit somehow this thick thin very straw needs to be placed here and somehow it doesn't have any cover so like I need some kind of cover material to cover this because the compound will get all over the, the tools and uh, it just needs to be done but then like these things are all the tools here are very necessary tools uh, there aren't any unnecessary tools here it's all necessary but then now it's getting too full uh, that is the problem I will show you one by one in the future video is why it's so full and what's so packed here and uh, yeah I just need to figure out the way to really do it or maybe I just need to make it a little bit bigger than this box maybe this box is too um, too less I mean too too um, too small for this whole thing because it's it's way too um, crowded. I need a couple more tools to be honest um, to be added here so that it gets really like full functioning workshop. Um, the clamp is for this um, the wooden one. Anyway, it's a big story. It's a fun topic that I just want to talk about in the future. And main topic for today is this knife needs to be here so that I, I can carry it on. And um, yeah, that's it. So. This is the reason why this knife, um, I, I bought this knife, because this needs to be in this box. So that was the whole purpose of it. This box review, I'll definitely do in the very near future, what's inside, what's all about, and uh, how it looks like and everything. I'll show you one by one, it'll be a really good topic. So anyways, thanks for watching guys, as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.